Hi there, Toy here, and I know you probably thought I fell off the plant face of the earth, but I didn't. Um, the month of April was crazy, and today I'm shooting a two-for-one video. Well, kind of a three-for-one video. Basically, this will be my wrap-up to RavenCon, reminding you that I still have the Tidewater Comic Con coming up. And I'm not really going to do a reading challenge update this month because, let's just be honest, I didn't get a lot of reading done in the month of April because I just had so much going on. On top of having constant struggles with illness and health and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. It's just something that I'm always dealing with, so it's not that big of a deal to me. It just sometimes makes it difficult to do the things that I need and want to do. So, jumping right into my wrap up to RavenCon, I've got some pictures and video clips that I'm going to, you know, kind of slide in here. The first thing I want to say is that it was a really fun event. Um, I had been to the RavenCon before as just kind of a, a vendor setting up my table to sell my books. But this year I was one of the guest speakers and it really made all the difference. Um, opening ceremony was pretty cool. As all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. Then um, I was on some panels and um, my first panel, the audience was extremely small, but I was extremely grateful for that because I was so jittery. I don't know why. So it was a wonderful kind of way to let me build up for some of the other things that were to come later. So here's a very small clip from one of my panels. There is a very misconception that because you have to move so quickly that you have to move everything. And I feel like for me, narrowing it down to these specific platforms that were smooth has made all the difference. There was at one point where I was trying to do everything that was out there. I was floating on LinkedIn, I was floating on Google Plus, I was floating on you know, Tumblr. I mean, everything that was out there, I was using it. And it was just, just wearing me down. So I decided for me that sticking with just a few specific platforms where I already have a bit of an audience, and both of you all know it helps a lot, and on those platforms, I feel it's more about engaging the reader. I don't promote so much as ask them questions, share certain things with them, see how they respond to them, and I feel like that helps a little bit. Um, sometimes I put the spotlight on someone else, and then that person will come back to me and say, hey, what do you have going on? So it's a lot of networking, it's a lot of turning the spotlight off myself and always having a presence there so that someone can turn back and say, oh, you did that, what else do you have? And so then um, there, was a, there was a lot happening. Um, the, you know, the guest speaker for this event was um, Mercedes um, Lackey. And I literally only saw her once. Like I saw her at the opening ceremony and she was fighting the con crud and I was fighting the con crud on top of a bunch of other stuff. So I literally only crossed paths with her like once, but it was still pretty cool. Um, some of the people that I was um, sharing a table with, I think they were able to maybe get like an autograph from her or talk to her, but I didn't really get to cross paths with her. Uh, but there were some pretty cool panels um, that were there. Some I really kind of wish I had been a part of. But for me, um, I think the most exciting panel that I, because I was on some pretty good ones, was the one about cutting the cable cord. And it was really cool because not only was it talking about some of the options people have nowadays with streaming services, 
but it correlated it into how it can affect your reading life and your writing life and whether or not people have started to abandon some of their reading and writing because they're so focused on watching television and kind of the consensus was aside from you can save a lot of money and you can stream a lot of things nowadays um, for writers streaming content is actually better uh, if you want to know more about that, leave me, you know, a question in the comments below and I'll tell you more about it. So anyway, um, I, when I was preparing for the RavenCon, I was so jittery. Um, I have a little bit of video footage of me getting ready that day. I will share that with you quickly. Hi everybody. So, um, today I'm trying something a little bit different. Um, trying to be a bit candid today and open up a little bit. I am getting ready for the RavenCon today. It's a three-day event. It starts today. And I am very nervous. And I'm not really sure why. I mean, I have um, done public speaking before. But I guess it's the venue that's kind of got me a little nervous. I mean, I'm going to be amongst people who are literal, like, bestsellers in the genre who are like legendary who have these fantasy series that people like quote and you know they dress up like the characters and stuff and I'm gonna be up there with these people and so I guess it's just a little intimidating and so I am trying to I guess psych myself up for that <laughs> so I'm gonna try my red this is fly girl and, whew, I don't know if I'm more nervous about my conference or this red. Let's see what happens. Huh. Oh boy. Whoa. have quite a bit of touching up to do. I think it's just because I'm so nervous and terrified I'm just not applying it well. So I'm going to have to use a lot of oops to fix this. Yeah, this is very red. This is might be more than I can handle. <laughs> so yeah, that was me trying a bold red to get ready for the day. And um, all in all, like I said, it was a really fun con. Um, con. <laughs> Um, I do want to say one thing. Um, I experienced something at the con that was no reflection on the convention people. Um, it was more a reflection of the location where we were having it. And people have been trying to convince me that I was maybe misunderstood the situation or that I was oversensitive. Everyone is entitled to their opinion and I'm not here to argue that. But the point of the matter is people, I've been black my whole life. And if I'm experiencing a racial prejudice, I'm experiencing a racial prejudice. There are a lot of things that can be misconstrued, a lot of things that can be um, over-exaggerated. Um, I get that, but when someone is being ignored, they know they're being ignored. And I'm just putting that out there to say, just be aware of how you're treating one another day to day. Um, make sure that if you're doing something for one that you're not excluding it for someone else. Just be fair all around and be attentive to people. Um, not every situation that you encounter is going to be a serve or pay situation type of thing. But just if you're courteous and you know considerate to people just because they're people, it really will make all the difference. So moving on. Um, the month of April, as far as my reading goes, uh, um, I think I, I mentioned on my blog somewhere that I only finished one book in the month of April, which is actually not true. I actually looked back and I finished two books, which of course I haven't written reviews for. Um, I haven't updated my reading challenge because it's been crazy, people. Yeah, so um, I did finish two books. I will try to review them. Um, the one book that I sort of kind of reviewed on my blog if you want to check it out I'll leave a link was um, my stepfather didn't kill himself by Russell Nolte it was a young adult um, contemporary drama 
dealing with grief and I'll have to get more into it when I do my official review later but if you want to see some of the comments that I made about it so far um, you can check the link below I'm not even going to leave like a rating for it or anything here right now I'm just going to save it the other book that I actually did finish in the month of April was the sequel to the disaster crime series which I believe was seismic crimes again I'll have to get more into that later it just didn't happen and last but not least, I have the Tidewater Comic Con coming up this weekend, which is why hopefully you're watching this video to hype and prepare for it. Usually when I do the Tidewater Comic Con, I spend most of my time at my table, which usually works out because you get to see every everything eventually makes its way around so you get to see stuff. But I've been training my husband really well on running the table by himself, so hopefully he and I can tag team a little bit where he can be at the table and I can actually go see some other things, maybe pop my head in on a panel or something, come back and maybe he can go out and see some things or, you know, so we're not just stuck at the table the whole time, even though that in and of itself is pretty fun. So Tidewater Comic Con is coming up. April was absolutely crazy. I'm hoping May will slow down a little bit, but yeah. Uh, one other quick thing, I am starting a special project where I'm working with an author group um, that it was started on Facebook I believe and it's basically a support group for independent authors and they have a promotional group as well but um, myself and a couple of other people have put together a new blog to help promote indie authors and so I'll be sharing more about that later but it's not really associated with my YouTube channel just wanted to throw it out there it's going to be called Reading Indie by APC and so um yeah that's what i have going on and yeah sorry it took me so long to get this posted hopefully like i said i'll be more up to date on things in the month of at the end of month may in the month of june all summer it'll be good so bye bye for now